So, Anna, I think we have everyone on board. So I would just like to uh, to confirm that Stefan from UCA is ready to start. Hi there, good morning. Good morning, Stefan. You're ready to go? And I yeah. think that, that is already also online. I'll just uh, briefly do an introduction. So we'll do uh, both presentations and then open for Q&A after the presentations, if that's okay for both of you. Because since we don't have the search uh, uh, panelists, that will give us a little bit more of time for questions and answers and also for discussion. So without further delay, first of all, thank you very much for, for being here and welcome to everyone once again. Uh, and Stefan, when you're ready to start, I'm not sure if you want to share your screen, but please go ahead. I think that you are already co-host for the meeting, so. Great, I'll, I'll just start with my screen then. Uh, here, all right. Okay, um, thank you very much for uh, inviting me to uh, address you. Um, Thanks for being here. Uh, my name is Steve Connolly. My role is as the uh, first year coordinator on the film production course at UCA Farnham. And I'm gonna kind of talk from uh, this perspective, the, um, the teaching first years um, through the pandemic and try and impart a sense of how our students in year one um, dealt with the, with, with the pandemic um, in, as it, as it um, came in the UK. So um, this has been a really difficult time for teaching, of course, and, and, and the doing of filmmaking itself. And I guess from my perspective, um, I'm an artist, nonfiction filmmaker, and I emphasize a real hunter gatherer vision of filmmaking to my students as they come in the first year, that they should, um, they, that, that filmmaking is an adventure and um, it centers on your encounter with the other people in the world. And as a filmmaker, you bring back your material and images and sounds, you shape it and share it with others. So the pandemic really puts this model into brackets. Travel's difficult. Many potential film subjects and associates would think twice about allowing their, 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 their home or their proximity to be visited by a student film crew, never mind kind of opening up to, to a student film crew. Um, here in the UK, our students come from, um, for the most part, a, a competitive and individualistic education system. On the film production course, almost all our projects are undertaken by students in groups and teams. And I would say that in first year, learning to work together can be a really steep learning curve for our new intake. They're young, right? They're, they're, they're teenagers. They're often not ready for this. And if I was 18 and going to that film school, I, you know, I'd probably be in trouble. I wouldn't have been ready for it at that age. So the problem with also teamwork is the pandemic can put this model into brackets. Uh, working in teams may be viable if the COVID test and trace uh, was able to monitor the common health of the students, as we know, in teams. But as many of you, uh, uh, of you are aware, the test and trace is facing multiple challenges. Uh, in the UK, I can say for sure um, that, that there are problems with it and student filmmakers are not a priority. So as the pandemic uh, rolled um, uh, across Europe, uh, my students raced to finish their 60 mil edits in the Steenbeck rooms at UCA. And that was a sad thing that um, I guess we couldn't deliver Steenbecks to people's homes to, to finish their films, but they could do the sound on the, the laptops um, uh, at home. Um, the other thing our students were doing as the as the, uh, as the lockdowns rolled across uh, the world, was starting uh, script writing. And this is a complement to the, the post-production on the Steam Mac, which can be a, a kind of lengthy process. And this, the, 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 the kind of the writer's room, they're, they're sitting around discussing scripts and being together, easily ported to Zoom. So our first year students were able to take that part of the course and move it online without a lot of difficulty. Sitting on, on, a, Zoom, uh, on a Zoom call, discussing scripts with the, with the script writing tutor, it's, it was much like in a seminar room in, on, on campus, 
And luckily, the groups that they had been in production for the Bolex film then carried forward into the script writing. So people already knew each other. So we didn't have the hurdle of having to introduce people to each other in this kind of online environment. So we've always found the framing of projects to be incredibly important in launching the filmmaking task to be undertaken. And we found this particularly so in, the, in this lockdown uh, 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 conditions. People were, our students were script writing. A crucial move we felt in the framing was trying to turn the lockdown into a, a positive um, and, and um, useful experience for the students. Um, to, to take the, the conditions of the pandemic as, uh, as advantageous for the development of a solo voice in, in, in filmmaking. So if we, in a, in, on our course, if we see the first two thirds of the, of the academic year were framed as, as um, exercises in the social and technical processes of filmmaking, for lockdown, we were able to frame filmmaking as the release of the students from these working conditions but with the knowledge of these working conditions. We frame filmmaking the pandemic as freedom, as a release from the negotiations of group work and the demands of production management. The pandemic offered them the opportunity to find their inner filmmaker within and now knowing of the filmmaking machine. So we set them a project to make a short fiction concentrating on a moment, a moment of emotion. Very short, two and a half minutes to be made on any uh, moving image making device that they, they can. Filmmakers could only work who was available to them. And in most cases, this was their family. In the films, we frequently saw the younger siblings who, who appeared or acted in the films they made. In a real sense, the filmmaking was not absent of other people. For the most part, they worked with others to carry the narratives of their films. Most importantly here, they were able to work with people they knew and trusted to make their work. This situation of working with trusted kind of colleagues in film production as co-producers comes with experience in professional life. It's not a working environment generally seen in first year student filmmaking. We do what we can. We induct our students in, 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 in good working practice. We, tr we try to model good working practice you know, and, and so on. And, and, and I'm often called in to, to uh, arbitrate in disputes about uh, good working practice. But in a sense, we also need them to move forward with their filmmaking in teams and find their own way in this group. We can't intervene all the time. So although in these uh, works that they made, although the performance, say, on screen, is not always fantastic or great quality, the working practice that they're, they're, they're generating their images is based on trust. The inexperience of their team members, also the experience of often their families and friends who are not filmmakers or actors, also has the implication that our filmmakers had to strive harder to realize their work. And the results perhaps are really, perhaps maybe um, more expressive of their intention because in a sense, their intention would in a, in a group work is, is mediated as it should be in, uh, by, by the other professionals working on the film. I have to say there's a gender dimension to this release from group work. Every year, female students come to me with concerns about group work. Sadly, we use some of our, 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 our female students and they change course in the university because the group work is so arduous. Young female filmmakers find the teamwork aspect in group productions a really tough call. And I mean, I do what I can, calling in colleagues and, and, and trying to ask uh, people to consider their behaviors, but there are limits to which I can intervene. Um, as the respected uh, academic uh, Stephen Collin remarks, higher education must be about encountering the other, whether in production or working in a team, but often this is really difficult to negotiate. Our students are not operating in a, in a, in a vacuum. The autocratic and non-collaborative are endemic in the history of filmmaking practice. If only we grudgingly admit to, to um, perhaps non-collaborative kind of ways of working in the film industry now. 
The cult of direct as an auteur is so attractive to many students, yeah? Um, and it's a, but it's also a symbol of so many hierarchies in film production industry and, and, and its critical and academic shadows. Perhaps that's not, the auteur is not a helpful model for, for, um, for, for teaching filmmaking. It's certainly not a helpful model when it's performed by our students in teams making films. And I, we, you know, we just have to, have to say that our students are not apart from the general ideas and society as it is, right? So that they, they come with this and we need to perhaps negotiate this. So, um, this, what I'm trying to say is, is in a sense that this opportunity the pandemic offered particularly resonated with our young female filmmakers. We really felt that um, overall the, 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 the excellence of their productions really came from their, their, their uh, contributions because they were in a sense released from the negotiations they needed to make in, 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 in team production. Okay, another aspect of this, this, this uh, working, moving from a team to a solo production. One of the most eloquent students um, said that he went into a solo filmmaking with the voices of the team in his head. And he relished what, we, what he called the precision of filmmaking in teams and by that he meant the the precision, the negotiation of what is what is in before and 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 and, and the framing of the scene and the and the making of the narrative by the creative process of many different voices adding to um, the, the the production. Um, he 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 said it blew his mind, which really stuck with me because it's a very un-English uh, expression. It's he blew his mind to be actually rehearsing the teamwork in his head as he performed and as he made a film on his own. Um, this, he said, has been enormously productive for his filmmaking practice. OK, I'll just show you some stills from some of the films. Let's have some pictures OK, here. So hopefully show you right so if i go here okay so um these are two and a half minute pieces they're concentrating on the emotional moments and the ability of the moving image to capture this emotional change in a person something that's really we, we find quite unique to, to the moving image um I, I hope you're seeing the main screen is that right yeah filling filled with a picture okay yes. Yes, yeah, good, yeah. good. So here, uh, uh, the, uh, our young filmmaker on a baker, she placed her younger sister in the frame. Okay, so in this short two and a half minute film, she's finding space to dream in a field. Okay, but the movement on the camera reveals it to be actually just across the road from her house as she's called back uh, on the phone by her anxious parent. Come back inside, you need to come back to, to kind of safety. Um, our young filmmaker Ed Hudek, he left this planet. He he went on a space odyssey, um, and this is this is interesting. Uh, uh, it's a big uh, uh, yeah, it's a post production film. Um, uh, it's a uh, production design film, and interestingly, in his shots, it's almost as if he never left his Zoom seat. He the, really he cuts between these 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 uh, space scenes and his his in, in a way looking at his his Zoom camera. Uh, Samir was stuck uh, in with, I think with, he had the most difficult thing. He was really locked into his uh, student accommodation, but he was still uh, seeking avenues in which he could uh, try to um, try to escape his, his confinement, if you like. Saga's character returns home. She finds the home empty. And this, I thought this was really, um, I thought this was really, it really struck me because in, in a way in this pandemic also our homes are now always full of of of, of people the people we live with often like and and the, it's difficult to find space in our home but finding the home um, empty saga's uh, character puts on the music and um, makes the space absolutely her own uh, her own she really takes up that space in a sense that place of of, of confinement so we found um, definitely there was so much discovery of the filmmakers we, uh, in this work, the filmmakers we didn't know that we had. 
And this, the really successful uh, uh, pandemic films that, that, that we saw were not necessarily coming from the students that, you know, we're teachers. We know we can kind of see when the student cohort comes in, there are students who we think will be flyers and students we think will, will make good solid filmmakers, but, you know, we, we, we can see um, a, a difference in our students. And feedback from our students really uh, recognized that these conditions in which they had to make two and a half minute films on whatever camera they had really uh, released resources of creativity, resilience and reserves of conviction. Reserves of conviction really to push forward and get their projects done. Okay, so in a small way, our filmmakers turned the lockdown conditions to their advantage in this disastrous year. And we will be hopefully looking forward to running a kind of pandemic project every first year from now. So we, what we see is that this idea of uh, something we haven't had before, but this idea of solo filmmaking can really consolidate the, the group working conditions that we begin students with in the first year. And yeah, I'll just finish there by saying this is the, the really the lesson that we've learned from our from, 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 as teachers in the in the pandemic. We've learned it from the filmmakers themselves, to which I, I really thank them for their for their efforts. Okay, that's that's it from me. Thank you all for listening. And um, yeah, I think I'll take uh, questions later. Okay, Stefan, thank you very much for your your presentation and the examples you brought us. I will now pass on to, as I said in the beginning. We'll do Q&A after the, the two presentations. So I'll now pass on to Bernadette for a presentation. So one moment, share the screen. Yes. Works, yes. So um, welcome also from my side to my short presentation, the personnel is political challenges of discussing the representation of laugh in fiction films in times of digital teaching. You already won for the best title. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a film director. I studied directing at Film University uh, Babelsberg in Germany. And currently I'm working as a research assistant at Zurich University of the Arts. And I also, I'm a, I work as a fellow there at, uh, in Zurich where I conduct my own artistic research project about gender representation in the so-called fellowship program at the Zurich University of the Arts. And this is a sort of a bridge program to a PhD. And for me, the intertwining of film theory and practice as a filmmaker um, was always the central part of my practice as a fictional filmmaker. And now with my focus also in artistic research, I'm exploring forms of knowledge production, not only with, but also through cinema. In this context, I also work as a lecturer at the Zurich University of the Arts to bring my own research questions into dialogue with students. I involve students in my uh, research questions of how the invisible, the marginalized can be, more, can be made more visible what are cinematic strategies to establish a feminist or a diverse or um, a less stereotypical gaze in current fictional filmmaking. And this time in this uh, seminar, I wanted to focus on the topic of love and the question of how to show love beyond stereotypical images and how to avoid the repeated reproduction of norms and cliches. Oops, doesn't work. Yes. The main focus of this term seminar was the love beyond stereotypical aesthetics, inspired by the French filmmaker Céline Schiama, who told about her last movie portrait of a lady on fire, plus on est intime, plus on est politique. I wanted to concentrate on these questions. How can depictions of love, intimacy, and bodies be a political gesture beyond standard, standardized film images, normative gaze constructions, and cliche body images, body images? So what is under regular conditions important in my teaching format? The seminar is mainly designed for BA students but it is also open uh, for a smaller group of students from the theater department and design department. 
Before the seminar, the students get a list of texts for every film to read them in at once. And then we meet every lesson in the cinema to watch one movie together. Further, I give a theoretical input and I involve the students in my ongoing artistic research. For example, I show them excerpts of interviews, uh, which I'm conducting with female directors, where we discuss, for example, the difficulties of showing female desire, to give one example. The dramaturgy of my course does not follow a linear dramaturgy. I try to put together a kind of fabric that in the end represents a diversity of topics and also aesthetical aspects. So the different topics open up a space to raise awareness and to raise questions. So the goal of the seminar is not only to broaden the theoretical knowledge, but to inspire the students to search for own images and also to reflect their own position as a filmmaker. For me, it is important to raise the awareness of normative structures in filmmaking, which are often accompanied by forms of exclusion, discrimination, and marginalization. So I always choose one scene of the film after the screening, and we watch this specific scene several times. The students are encouraged to train the perception by analyzing the details of the scene, which allows them to raise awareness of norms in filmmaking. And then we have always a broader discussion to discuss these topics. And there it is very important for me to, to create a safe space for all members of the group. And this should empower the students not only to talk about the scene, but also to fe feel free to, to express their own uh, personal perceptions, feelings, experiences towards their own filmmaking and also um, in regard to the stories they want to tell. So then the lockdown came <laughs> one week before the start of the seminar, and I had to confront myself with a digital Zoom format within quite a short time. I had about one week, and I decided that we tried to keep the structure of the seminar, but the students should watch the movies at home by their own before every seminar day. I sent them a switch drive box with the movies and the texts, and a few days later we started. The seminar was transformed to Zoom, and I wanted to risk to make uh, to go on making these discussions in such a, or in a in a more or less large uh, Zoom group, even though I knew about the difficulties. And what were these difficulties in this virtual seminar? <laughs> The experience of the student's own body and identity serves as a basis for uh, inspiring discussions uh, normally. This suddenly changed because we were not physically in the same room. We talked, we, in the seminar, we always talk, I would say, very a lot about gases, for example, because it's so important. And in this uh, case, we talked about gases and also bodies in film, but we did not experience our own bodies and gazes and the physical impact in the same space. And this made a, a big difference. Also the flatness of the screen for the contributed to a certain lack of spatial interactions and diversity. And also in the Zoom room, there are always these shifting views. So we don't know always where exactly we should uh, look at. And, um, this makes it also impossible to have an eye contact and this also makes it more difficult to receive an obvious feedback from the students glances and body language for me. The, and also uh, among the students. So the group was quite big for the Zoom room. In the discussions, I could not encourage all the students to take part and some students didn't get enough opportunities to express themselves in the virtual room. Therefore, it was more challenging to create a team spirit and to have discussions about the films and our own position as filmmakers. So what were, uh, what were the strategies to cope with these challenges? At the same time, the students had more time uh, to read texts than before the lockdown. And um, as the seminar progressed, it is every week, um, many of the students ask me to send them more texts to read and to send them more texts to watch. 
And so I decided to create a small uh, reading group, um, which was voluntary. Um, for example, um, we did one uh, reading group, one channel reading group with bodies that matter from Judith Butler in combination with a text about different modern acting methods, especially the students which were more reserved in the big uh, Zoom seminar engaged more actively in this small, more intimate Zoom reading group. And they brought also the small inputs from these reading groups back to the, to the bigger uh, Zoom conversation. So this improved the, the team building process a lot. And also the digital communication and teaching required more attention towards the students, uh, the students, and also they need more uh, personal support and they wrote more emails. And um, I realized that I, I noticed that with increasing lockdown time, the uncertainties and fears increase towards the future, the projects, projects and I also um, decided to talk about these things and I had to ref though this I had to reflect my concept after every seminar more than usual and for example I decided that we had to put more and more focus on different concepts of the role of the body in in staging and in filmmaking because the question became more and more important for the students in time of physical distancing. So what were the small triumphs in this process or in this journey? Um, the possibilities of various forms of sharing experience and knowledge were simplified, such as coming together in a reading group where the students normally had not enough time because they are shooting and are <laughs> always on different um, places. So, um, or for example, an acting student who, uh, who would have been busy with his curriculum otherwise, he could come to the seminar and enrich the group with his perspective, though there are also new possibilities. And also, for example, in my research pro project, I could do a Zoom interview with the director, Teona Struga-Mitewska, who was before totally booked out, and I could bring this. Uh, I could um, bring this interview directly to the seminar, and this could bring or could integrate this perspective of the filmmaker into our seminar and our discussions. There was another uh, small triumph for me, or something which is very interesting in my opinion that being so close to each other's private rooms made all of us more vulnerable, especially the students. Sometimes in the seminar, the two-year-old child of one of the students ran through the picture, or uh, we, we heard a small argument uh, of two of the students who are a couple and didn't realize that the microphone was already on. And so we had to cope also with these very private things which came uh, very closely uh, in the images of the Zoom uh, seminar. And this also made it possible to talk on a more intimate level about the connection between the private and the political and between um, yes, different concepts of love, society, and um, yes, about, about, about these personal experiences. The topics of our discussions and the private lives of all of us were merging together and some aspects got obvious on a very personal level. And at the same time, we were aware of respecting the borders of each other. This brought up many exciting questions and also personal experience that would have not been discussed in the seminar otherwise. So love as a political gesture and images and the connection between the private and the political became a topic on many different levels. So it was at the end also a journey which made me and the students reflect more about the depictions of love than perhaps in the normative, normative situation of the classroom. But still I realized how important it was for them to get back to physically seminars about filmmaking where they can think further about the questions which arouse during the seminar and really experiment together in, in filmmaking. 
last but not least a small selection of topics and films that we have worked on with the students a few examples um, one topic was um, coming of age the social construction of love and desire with the movie love like poison another topic was black looks queer love solidarity with rafiki and bell hooks Another topic was love, class, and precarity with Miller from Valérie Massadion. And for example, the construction of the gaze as violence and power construction with the movie Get. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Bernadette, for your presentation. I'll just briefly try to summarize some of the challenges that you both of you have mentioned, and hopefully I've captured the, the, the context of both your talks correctly. And hopefully that will lead also to some further discussion and questions. Uh, in the case of, of Stefan, I think that the main challenge that was addressed was this move from teamwork to individual work. Uh, I really enjoyed the idea of the solo voice. So how do we as uh, educators that are used to work with teams uh, uh, reinforce this uh, solo voice. Stefan also mentioned um, the complexity of moving from a team work and a team based environment to isolation and showed us some examples of what uh, uh, his students did. Um, I was uh, uh, fascinated by one of the, the things you mentioned, which is that isolation also gave us the opportunity to understand our students' view of society and the films they did somehow show their views of society, which is always uh, very complex when you're dealing with first year, first year students. Uh, and uh, 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 I think that the main concept that Stefan brought to the discussion is this idea of the total filmmaker, because all of a sudden our students can no longer work in teams. So they had to make everything on their own uh, and, uh, uh, and become total filmmakers. So to do the film uh, covering all areas uh, of specialism. In the case of, so a more, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, pre presentation focusing more on the, the issue of practical, practice-based uh, teaching and team-based uh, uh, work. While with Bernadette, we moved more to the, let's say, the theoretical realm uh, with a focus on a critical seminar and how this was moved from uh, uh, the typical live format to a digital format and some of the, the challenges that entails. Um, I think that one of the uh, uh, two of the, the, the key challenges that were mentioned are how do we rethink ourselves as teachers? I think you focused on something that is probably a challenge to all of us, which is the fact that during the lockdown, the level of personal support the students required from us was much higher than in regular uh, teaching and also uh, the issue of how do we engage students in an environment like this one? Because the fact that there is physical contact is extremely low. Uh, the exchange of, of gaze is extremely low. So it's really very, very hard to engage students. You mentioned some of the strategies that you followed and some of the positive outcomes of that. I would say that the, the sharing is something that is probably common to many of these online experiences because the ones that are engaged are more ready to share and to talk. Obviously, the fact that people also had more time available made it easier <laughs> to, to do that. Um, and also uh, uh, the fact that new theoretical connections came out of the, uh, of the discussion, of the online discussion, and the way you divided the students, you gave the students the opportunity to, to move into smaller, safer environments where they could more easily participate it's also uh, uh, is also a, a, an interesting example um, so two different completely different case studies two different uh, perspectives but i think that are common to many of our schools so i would now open for uh, uh, questions and answers live raise his hand and also sue we will start with live please well, I just uh, applauded, uh, but also I, I, since, since you ask, I have a question where um, it's uh, probably more to Stephen, uh, because uh, I guess you had the same experience with the first year students as we did, where 
we were kind of lucky that the lockdown came in March where we already had been working with the students for half a year and we knew them. So it was uh, uh, easier or to understand and accept how, how things were working. But now starting a new semester with completely new students this, uh, this autumn in August, uh, we have been much more aware and e afraid uh, that we will have to split up and, and uh, uh, and, and sort of establish a completely new relationship with the students on an online course instead of a physical presence. Uh, you, you talk about uh, the, the, the upside of, uh, of, of using the, the, the lockdown. Um, uh, and uh, I think I, I, my question is uh, how, how have you transferred the experiences that you had for during the spring uh, into a new course? It's always difficult because we've got quite a big course. Um, we have, uh, our intake last year was 130. So, I mean, that's maybe quite unusual for a film school to be so big. So so last year, I guess we framed it really as, you know, the, the final unit, we really want to get to know you. So, you know, go and make these more personal films. This year, um, <laughs> in two weeks, I've got to say, we need to know you first. <laughs> <laughs> so we will, because we're remote, we, we, you know, you will need to make personal portrait films and, and films about the, the, the places in your life, the, the important places in your life, so that we can get to know you before we actually meet in person uh, in, 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 in February. So in a sense, we're kind of flipping, flipping the year around and hopefully keeping the, uh, the, the analog unit in running from February through to April. We're keeping that then as a kind of um, a pivot around where the, where the year will run. It has to be run at a large scale. And that will be the time when all the students come and well, they have to be on site and, and they will also like be meeting each other. So I guess, yeah, that a simple way, we're just, we're just flipping it around. Mm. Can I help? just, life, sorry, can I just add something there before I, I, we move on? One of the things we are really interested in and you've, you've touched that point is besides the experiences of schools moving for a digital environment during the lockdown, one of the things we are quite curious about is how are schools coping with the new year because one thing was, as you rightly pointed, was because in March, some of us had already been in classes for one month, uh, projects had already started and stuff. But now with the new year, it's, it's quite a challenge. So one of the things that we are quite keen in having feedback from actually from everybody is the different strategies that the schools are following. Are schools going for, again, for a full online environment? Are we somehow trying to have a mixture between remote and live. So it would be very, very interesting, uh, obviously besides questions for the presenters, to have the feedback from the different schools on the strategies that are being followed uh, to cope with the, with the new year. Because I think that, that, that sharing of experience is highly valuable. Would you want me to respond to to that yeah, very briefly? Yeah, 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 we can yeah. Start okay. So, um, yeah, um, I mean, I mean, we, we you know, we 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 have a, a difficult situation here in the UK. We've had protests from students uh, asked to, asked to come back. What we've decided to do is really to start. Um, we offer about two weeks of in person, and we sort of kind of calculated that by November time we're going to have another another situation. So we're then preparing to move it to move it. Um, uh, if you like, I think we well, we've got two terms: on site and off site. And on site would maybe may, maybe means in person. Offsite could be someone who has to be at home who's 20 miles away, but also we have some students who've decided to join the course from China, so they will be offline from offsite in China. So I guess we have to we have to be careful when make these very simple briefs that can be um, undertaken uh, for small films that have to be uploaded, uh, individual projects, and um, have them rotating around a number of them and really try to pitch it to say maybe uh, um, uh, almost in a more kind of political framework, we need to get to know you and to find out what you have to say as filmmakers, which 
uh, maybe there's more space to think about that uh, about that now. I don't know, but um, th that that's our strategy. I'm I'm really be really encouraged to hear of other strategies that um, mm -hmm. uh, people. Yeah, have. yeah, that's I think that's one of the things that everyone is more interested in. Uh, Julie from La Femis just suggested on the chat that we share a Google Doc uh, on uh, strategies for the new year with uh, uh, with everyone. I've I've asked Anna to to share that doc in a in a minute. But now let's first move on to Sue from IFS because she raised her hand. Good morning, Sue. Good morning, all. Thank you so much for your presentations, both of you. Um, just briefly uh, to add to that, uh, Manuel, we uh, at the IFS in Cologne, Germany, um, we're, we're going for a hybrid. Um, we have to go for a hybrid form moving forward um, simply because we're not able to get the amount of students into the school that we were before even if they are at the school so just to sorry to interrupt just to understand due to the constraints that uh, result from legal dispositions that from social distancing and so forth right yeah that's right that's right so where we would have 25 or 20 students in a room we can only have 12 now and so it means like uh, less students in, in general being in the school. And that's why some courses are moving uh, to uh, online formats, some not. We also have the situation that, like uh, that was just previously, but Stefan was just talking about that we have students that are unable to get to the IFS. So we're having to do um, the hybrid uh, format as well. But what I wanted to um, uh, touch on was something that Bernadette uh, was talking about. Um, I, I found it really interesting, this, this idea of the students being vulnerable in, or just being able to uh, see it in that context, um, in, in this kind of uh, environment. Because what was happening in the beginning was students were not putting their, or they're just having their, um, their video off and their name sort of standing there. And this, the teachers were getting um, aggravated by this, sort of like, I, you know, I need my, what's going on, where they're going, they're, you know, they're doing their thing, what's going on. And it was, it was, it was like a real uh, change of um, mindset to understand, yes, you're, you're looking into my room, you're looking into my, my space that's here. So, and maybe I'm not ready to share that with you. So, um, yeah, I think that's really important to consider, um, you know, a, a different way of sort of looking at when we're speaking in this environment, what, what we're actually dealing with. Um, what, I, what I wanted to ask you was, um, I found it interesting, this idea of learning groups, um, that they're going into smaller groups. My experience, um, because I, I'm also in a master's right now, is that um, working with breakout rooms, which um, I think you all have done as well, right? That's in Zoom where you take a small, smaller group and put them together. Um, that in that, in an environment of sort of three to five people in a breakout room, uh, in my experience, the, the feedback and the eye contact um, problematic uh, is much easier to handle. Like much, uh, like we've, or I've had some very intense feedback sessions between three people or five people in that way, sometimes even more intense than actually being in a physical room together because you are, you're, you're really, I to uh, like, you're so close, we're, we're so close to each other and there's, there's no uh, kind of possibility to, um, to distract from that. So um, I guess I was wondering if this learning group was, um, uh, without you, if they were sort of um, uh, just students talking to each other, because that's basically what happens, right? When you're working with breakout rooms, you can't be in every room, so you you have you basically let go of the control or this idea that the teacher is going to be giving the feedback or the teacher is the person who needs to be focused on. You're, you're moving to an environment where they're learning from each other and you're moving away from the hierarchy of the teacher as the person who's to be focused on, right? So I, I'm wondering if you use that in your courses at all um, or if, you, if that was the, um, the learning group. So in this case, um, we, we we did some breakout rooms uh, in the seminar also, but um, 
this reading group um, of which I talked, it was really that we met on another uh, on another day, and we did, and, and it was not a breakout room. It was not. <laughs> it was not. A, it was not. It was not a, a breakout room, and the students were not alone, like you described. So, um, but um, it was more. I would say. It was really a reading group where we met for two hours. That means we um, all the students are read the, the two or three texts uh, in advance. Then we came together and they all of them bring um, some sentences which they want to talk about. So it was really that I didn't talk so much and they really discussed with each other because they had prepared these sentences, they had prepared um, some images which they wanted to discuss um, in combination with with a certain thought or something like this. They, they came with their preparation and I was there but um, it was not this classical <laughs> teaching uh, concept of, of me telling them uh, um, or, or giving them an answer or uh, yes there's not okay. this didactic concept okay I explain you <laughs> what you you have read because they really they really all of them brought already this question they brought the question they brought their uh, attitude towards a certain text and 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 the film and so on but i also did this breakout room um in the, these breakout rooms in the seminar sometimes where um it was uh, which was also a, a good opportunity that the students discussed the the topics before coming back to me and the the big group so there they were alone. And Bernadette, for the new year, uh, how, is, are you, how are you guys doing in Zurich? Are you going fully online or a hybrid model like you mentioned? It's also a hybrid model at Zurich University of the Arts, but uh, even I would say most, uh, mostly uh, everything is really uh, at the university because the students, the students have to wear masks, but they can come to the university. So, but there are also some cases like a uh, Sue told from Cologne that sometimes the the, the space is uh, not enough <laughs> or, or the rooms are not big enough. And so there are um, hybrid models where some students are at home and some students are at school, but mostly now the students uh, came back to university. So. Okay, we now have a question from, for Bernadette from Munich. Are shoot it again. Sorry, with a certain uh, a con with a with a um, concept with a certain how do you say? Uh, yes, the, they shoot again. Uh, small as uh, the the short movies. Mm -hmm. So uh, Jan, please go ahead from Munich. Yes. Um, so thank you for having me. Um, I have a question for you, Benedict, because um, I'm uh, working for the Dogfest, but I'm also teaching. And you stated um, that the effect of being private in the private rooms um, led to uh, respecting the borders more. Um, so could you elaborate on that one? Because my experience is quite to the contrary, that we have something like an image which we project and we have nice backgrounds. We uh, construct to give us like an online persona. And um, so the question about the borders, could you elaborate on it? Could you give me an, an, an example? I, I think, uh, no, I think you, you are completely right. I think it, 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 it's not something which happens, but I think um, I realized that I really want to talk with the students about these borders and about respecting them. And I wanted to raise the awareness about the borders and can we can we even respect them if there is if there is something happening like really we had one time we had this uh, uh we had this small fight of this couple of students and they didn't realize that the microphone and the video was already on and they were always in, they lived together in the same flat but were in different rooms and we saw them and 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 they they fought and and not not physically but they um yes there was a small quarrel and um we and i 
and yet, for example, I think we have to talk about this thing and we have to ta uh, raise the awareness that we lose our uh, we lose our borders with this Zoom format and we we even lose um, we even lose also these um, these these possibilities to 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 yes to 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 raise <laughs> to raise borders and for example also what what image do do I uh, do I choose <laughs> behind my <laughs> behind my back or is it simply a white wall I think is it, for me it's it's simply important to to talk about these things and not to um, allow them to be only in the background and nobody's discussing them so this is this and i think to talk about them it helps i wanted to say more it helps to reflect the borders so perhaps mm -hmm. a little bit misunderstand yeah thank you for that one yes uh, thank you jan we'll now move on to nduka who also has a question go ahead thank you very much thank you colleagues for this amazing opportunity thank you Bernadette and Stephen for very very rich presentation but I was very fascinated Stephen when you spoke about the idea of, of when you had the students doing these personal films and what stood out for me was when you said usually we have these kinds of preconceptions of who are the good students uh, and then so I wondered when you started talking about how some of the female students were strong who were strong like the female students came to so how, I, I was very fascinated by that idea in a sense that how does this moment of, of the pandemic make us rethink our kind of very well inscribed ideas around excellence, around who usually like in a film school, like like like, like I teach in Angel, but where it's predominantly female, but it's always the boys who become cinematographer. Who becomes. So my question to you perhaps to elaborate more on that, that this opportunity for us as teachers, for us not to kind of reinscribe very problematic ways of how uh, hierarchies and how, how, how just the power then in, in relation to gender. I would like you to speak a little bit more about that because I found it quite fascinating for me. Thanks. Ah, thanks for your question, uh, Naduka. That's that's yeah. It is it is fascinating, I guess, because we um, we the the films go through process, which is which is done um, by by team meetings. Um, it's it's enabled by by team meetings, which we facilitate. So um, I think it's I think it's kind of recognized um, through um, many, many walks of life that, you know, some people feel more entitled to talk in in meetings than others. And um, it, it's it's although although we we, we have um, students need to go to um, an afternoon seminars on group working and being everybody having uh, the uh, ability or being being given the the, the, the chance to speak um you know actually achieving that in 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 practice i would say is 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 like is is really complicated. It, it can come to a point when you, <laughs> you 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 be asking students say something, please, <laughs> you know, uh, and 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 you but you don't want to embarrass people, right? Because that then that can prove a kind of self fulfilling prophecy, you know. Um, so. Yeah, what 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 I what I think, and to be explicit, you know, we 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 have, you know, a, a lot of the white males who join our course are are very feel very entitled to um, be the directors of films, and they and they and they and they will will say so and behave so in, despite the multiple team collaborative kind of uh, process that 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 we use. So. Um, yeah, the, the, it's it's it, it, it. There's also culturally different ways of 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 behaving, uh, and and these things are quite. Um, I don't know. I I, I guess I I I I've got no particular. Uh, I've got no general solutions. In particular solutions. I have gone to some of the more um, kind of uh, male dominant students and said. You know this attitude. Why don't you save that for producers when you're done, right? But here we're at university, and we need to have a safer and more inclusive space. 
but if you if you can have that attitude to go get money then maybe can you reserve it for that 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 kind of place and to progress your projects i don't know it's 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 it in it, it it is a difficult one and I'd, I'd i'd be really open to any suggestions that that anyone may have to try to equalize and i, I think it it, it, costs, it it cuts across gender and it cuts across race as well so it's it, it that really needs acknowledging in our in our practice Bernadette, do you want to add something on that topic? I think I only, only one thought, and I think that it's really also important to show uh, to show a wider range of diverse and, and different movies from 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 different directors because I realized so often that uh, students of um, yes they they were really encouraged and and they they felt entitled after realizing how how much more diverse the, 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 the world of films is. So, um, and I think that's so important for me. I realized that this was really something which, which helps uh, that also uh, this, this diversity of student feels meant <laughs> to, to be directors, to be filmmakers, to be uh, yes, a, a female DOP or, or, or so on. So. I think it's also in many different aspects, not only, yes, not only gender. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that basically we are discussing how can we make this digital environment more inclusive? And that's a tremendous challenge because it's, it involves a lot of, uh, it involves a lot of, of issues. And I'm not sure if any of you had that experience, but one of the most uh, uh, less rewarding experience I had during this period was the shyness on the students that had no proper internet connection or no proper devices to do their connections. It was, I would say, one of the worst examples I've seen in my life of someone really putting himself aside due to the fact that he was ashamed in front of the others that he had no proper connections to, to join the session. Um, and although we, and it's very complex for educators, for instance, in our case, during the first sessions, we had this rule that everyone had to have their cameras uh, live so that we could basically what confirm that they were online and participating. And after a while, we completely changed that decision because we understood that for some students, it was very, very complex. Well, first of all, many of them had no cameras uh, in their computers. And for others, that was a, a kind of a pressure uh, from a social point of view on their appearance and on how do would they behave online. Jan mentioned this idea of the digital persona. So the one, the persona you incarnate in order to participate in online meetings. And I think that's really one of the main challenges of how to make this environment more inclusive. The other one obviously has to do with team uh, work and how do you reinforce uh, teamwork. The issue of the breakout rooms that Bernadette mentioned uh, is a good example because, for instance, uh, uh, in my experience, the breakout rooms work with some students. Usually they don't work with students that have no previous uh, uh, knowledge one of the others. So once again, it's a, it's, a, it's a good question for a new year when we have newcomers that have never met one another uh, live. Uh, uh, how, do we, how do we cope with that? Um, just to, just to, to resume on something that we were previously talking about, Anna uh, uh, already shared a Google Doc where we would like everyone to kind of share examples of strategies they are now following for the new year. So not for the previous lockdown period, but for the new year, namely in relation with uh, engaging these newcomers that are fresh into our schools. Uh, and how do we, how do we uh, uh, somehow engage them uh, uh, more, more, more often and more uh, in a better way. So uh, I would just like to uh, follow on something that has just been published by Yoti on the, on the chat. And I would like to have kind of Stefan and Bernadette final comments on uh, 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 this issue of inclusion and strategies for inclusion. Uh, if, uh, and my question is very simple. In, in both your experiences, you were dealing with BA students. None of you mentioned older students, I'm talking of master students and PhD students. My question is very simple. Do you think that the strategies you both followed for, I can imagine Bernadette's strategy 
to easily be adapted for MA or PhD students. But would you say that when dealing with the pandemic, the strategies we followed for BA students could be replicated for MA or PhD students? Or do you think that there are differences on how we deal with those students? Because one of the things that, for instance, in my school has been discussed is that with MA and PhD students, we might not need as much of physical contact as with BA students, so younger students, just to put it simpler. So what's your opinion on that? Do you think it's different to deal with BA students and MA students, or is it exactly the same? And what was your experience? I'm not sure you taught MA or PhD, but what was your experience in the case you did? Yeah, Bernadette, if you want to start. Yeah, I think um, I would, uh, to be spontaneous now, <laughs> I would say uh, that it would be possible to adapt this seminar for, for MA students, for example. And there were also some MA students in my, but only two in my seminar. Um, I think, but I think it's like you said, they, they need perhaps less physical or less, uh, less physical or, or how do you, they, they need less contact or they, they, I realized that the MA students in my seminar, for example, they they didn't uh, write so much emails or they are more more self-confident in a certain way because they experienced more uh, filmmaking they experienced uh, they they experienced more uh, this um, to be a director or to be a dop or and so on though so they are uh, there's a the, the position is uh, is already it's more um, Yes, it's they have they 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 have reflected more their own position as filmmakers and their own position as artists, and I think that makes a difference. But um, yeah, I think I could do the seminar also for MA students. Mm -hmm. And for example, I'm yes, I'm I'm working. Uh, I I'm, I will do a, a PhD in the future, so I would say. Um, there, there, there are similar. Uh, there, there could be similar concepts, although in the collaboration, for example, with other PhD students, because you also mentioned PhD. Mm -hmm. Stefan, um, I, I've, I've got my first PhD uh, uh, student starting this year. I'm very excited, but uh, he's in Poland, um, <laughs> so. Um, I will, we're going to have to work this out. I mean, I'm, I hope we can we can swap our, our our movies at least to introduce ourselves through through that. Um, in terms of MA, I mean, I would I would think that um, maybe a short a, a short portrait film without too much invested in might might be a way of kind of loosening people up. I mean, I remember my, my MA was very theory heavy and uh, perhaps a, a, a mandatory production project where you reveal something of yourself in a, in a, in a small way, I think may, may really help break that break that ice, right? Uh, uh, yeah, that's that's just an off the cuff suggestion. But thank you for the yeah, question. Yeah, uh, uh, there was a reason to my question because I, I'm I'm utterly convinced that it's different. I, I'm convinced that some of the positive uh, uh, lessons that we can take out of the pandemic can be reused for PhD and MA level education, namely the ones dealing with very close small groups interaction and uh, let's say personal critical and theoretical support. So very similar to what Bernadette mentioned. I'm not at all convinced these models can be used for BA or initial level uh, education. I think that you guys touched uh, a key issue, which is the issue of specialism. Many of our students at BA and still at MA level come with, let's say, a personal ambition towards some sort of specialism being it cinematography or sound or whatever. I think that the concept of the total filmmaker that Stefan introduced is a very, very interesting one, but it's one that diminishes the relevance of specialism because in the end, the students get convinced become, that they can do everything. And I'm not saying this in a, in a, in a bad sense. It can, that can be positive. Obviously, there are positive outcomes of that, but I think that that somehow also... Uh, uh, 
threatens the DNA of our schools because the focus on specialism is something that our schools do differently from other uh, educational institutions that also provide education uh, around film or on film, as you want to put it. So I think that uh, that that challenge is there. So how do we maintain our DNA? Because if everyone goes online, what makes us different from schools all, all over the world providing uh, uh, film education in completely different manners from the one the one we are doing it now? So in that in a certain manner, what makes us different from the No Film School website? Because they also they they also claim to provide education around film. So I think that there's a there's a big challenge there. Um, and uh, um, obviously those challenges uh, uh, are only not only for our schools, but also for us as educators. So I would like to thank both of you for giving us these wonderful presentations on, the, uh, on challenges for the educators and how the two of you coped with those challenges during the pandemic. Um, we will continue this seminar uh, in, the, in the afternoon at 2 uh, p.m. Central European time, 1 p.m. in the UK and in Portugal. Um, so uh, we will meet everyone again online. Um, one very interesting uh, outcome already uh, came out of this, of this discussion. So Anna already uh, uh, shared the, 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 the Excel file. It would be very interesting if all of you could somehow give your input on that on that Excel file, please let us know of strategies you are now following to cope with the challenges the new year brings. In particular, uh, strategies you are using to deal with newcomers, people that have just arrived to your school, first year BA or MA students, uh, because I think that we are all very interesting in learning uh, from each other on how to deal with those students and obviously how to face uh, a new year that is full of uncertainties. We don't know for how long this will last. We really don't know the consequences. So uh, I think that everything is open for discussion, which is also uh, wonderful. Uh, uh, at 5 p.m. we will try to present the conclusions, uh, not only of these talks, but also of the talks in the afternoon, but also hopefully uh, present some of the inputs that uh, everyone will add on that, uh, on that Excel. So having said that, I would like to thank everyone for being here. I would particularly like to thank Bernadette and Stefan for their presentations. And I hope to see you all in the afternoon. I'm not sure if there are any final remarks or questions anyone wants to, to put forward. There was a very lively discussion on the chat. Someone mentioned, I think it was Sue, that the chat also presents opportunities for those that usually don't like to talk to, to participate. And that's true. We had a lot of participation and engagement in the chat. So thank you very much, everyone, for your participation and collaboration and I'll see you all uh, after lunch okay thank which you. is also which is also important okay thank you very much thank you very much thank you Stefan bye bye everyone and please leave your inputs on the file <laughs>